In line with the celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's accession to the throne, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa opened the Khalifa Water Distribution Station in the presence of a number of ministers. His Highness the Southern Governor and representatives of the Saudi Fund for Development, led by the CEO of the fund, Sultan bin Abdurrahman Al Murshid. The Deputy Premier has affirmed that the electricity and water services in over the two decades have witnessed an unprecedented development and have become connected to all real estate and all governance of the kingdom in addition to the ability of their networks to meet current needs and accommodate future ones. He added that the remarkable development achieved by the electricity and water sector is a reflection of the rapid growth witnessed by the kingdom in light of the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in providing government services and expanding the scope of their beneficiaries. He pointed out that the kingdom is proceeding with its pioneering development plans towards achieving basic infrastructure sustainability and enhancing its ability to keep pace with residential, industrial, commercial and investment requirements based on strategic visions of securing water and energy resources and delivering them to subscribers in accordance with the best practices. The Deputy Premier noted the integration and collaboration witnessed in the government work system between ministries and relevant service agencies, including the Electricity and Water Authority, in a way that enables them all to provide the growing needs of citizens and residents through a number of development projects within the 2023-2026 program. He he praised the role of the chairman of the EWA engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed and all the authorities' employees for their efforts to improve government services and continue to provide the vital electricity and water services. For his part, the EWA chairman expressed thanks and gratitude to the deputy prime minister for opening the station, praising follow-up of a vital projects and coordination efforts among relevant authorities through the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects. He pointed out that the station, which is funded within the Gulf Development Program by the Saudi Fund for Development, at a total cost of 13 million Bahraini dinars aims to provide water services to residents of Khalifa town. He added that the scope of the station includes the construction of two ground tanks made of reinforced concrete with a storage capacity of 7 million gallons for each tank, in addition to a distribution station containing four main pumps to pump water into the distribution network, and each pump can supply the network of approximately 704 cubic meters per hour. The station also contained motors for pumps and devices to change the speed of the motors which will work to supply the network with the water it needs. He also pointed out that this station is the first of its kind as it, it will be fully powered by electricity with solar energy in line with the authorities' efforts to adopt sustainable energy solutions and keep pace with the goals of clean energy production. He added that the preparations are currently being made to begin the work of installing the solar panel system to produce renewable electricity energy with a capacity of 1.4 megawatt with a production capacity exceeding 2 million kilowatts per hour per year. The CEO of the Saudi Fund for Development praised the established development relations and the close historical development partnership between the Saudi Fund and Bahrain, extending since 1976, pointing out that the station comes within the framework of the fund's financing of many development projects in Bahrain, totaling about $3 billion under the generous guidance of the leadership of the two brotherly countries as a number of these projects have been launched, in addition to the projects currently being implemented which contribute to achieving sustainable development. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa paid a visit to the headquarters of the Administrative Capital for Urban Development Company in Egypt in the presence of the Arab Parliament Speaker Adil Usumi and Member of the Arab Parliament Major General Tariq Nasser. The Deputy Premier affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, appreciates all the steps taken by Egypt under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al Sisi to move forward with the desired reform and development process in all fields, especially economic and investment ones, in a way that enables it to achieve economic growth and prosperity. He praised the manifestations of cultural and urban development that Egypt is witnessing and the pioneering experience of its development projects and comprehensive modernization. Upon arrival, the Deputy Premier was received by the Chairman of the Board of Directors and Managing Director of the Administrative Capital for Urban Development Company, Engineer Khaled Abbas. At the beginning of the visit, the Deputy Premier listened to a briefing about the new Administrative Capital project and viewed a presentation explaining the stages of the project's development. 
He explained that the new administrative capital is a source of pride for Egypt and Arab countries and embodies the vision of President Assisi of what Egypt will be like in the near future. The deputy premier pointed out that the new administrative capital, thanks to the enormous infrastructure and diverse and advanced facilities it was founded on, can be considered a smart city and an integrated real estate development project that will provide a sustainable quality of life and business opportunities. He wished those in charge of the project's success in achieving the desired goals. After that, the deputy premier signed the senior official's record and toured the project. For his part, Engineer Khaled Abbas expressed his happiness with the visit of the deputy prime minister and praised the depth of the bilateral relations, which are based on brotherhood and joint cooperation. The official visit of the parliamentary delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain headed by the Speaker of the Representatives Council to Egypt affirmed the depth of the Bahraini-Egyptian relations as the visit aimed uh, to enhance joint Arab action for the benefit of the two brotherly countries. More in this report. The official visit carried out by a parliamentary delegation headed by the Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Lamsalam to Egypt affirmed the strong bilateral ties which are deeply rooted in history thanks to the keenness of His Majesty the King and the Egyptian President, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the Egyptian Prime Minister. During the visit, the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa on the occasion of his visit to Cairo and his participation as a guest of honor in the Sixth Conference of the Arab Parliament. The President praised the advanced levels of joint work and mutual coordination witnessed by the Bahraini-Egyptian relations in light of the keenness and interest given by the leadership of both countries to strengthening these relations and advancing them towards broader horizons to benefit both countries and their peoples. During the visit, discussion sessions were held between the two sides where the Secretary General of the Arab League praised the efforts of His Majesty the King in supporting the role of the Arab League and his keenness on Arab coordination and integration through royal visits to Arab countries and regional and international action in order to ensure the security and stability of the region and to support the central issue of the Arab nation, foremost of which is the Palestinian cause. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the Representatives Council of Egypt stressed the distinction of the Egyptian-Bahraini relations and pointed out the importance of Bahrain hosting of the upcoming Arab Summit on the 16th of May as it constitutes a new phase of Arab action and joint solidarity. 
During the meeting between the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Lamsalam, and the Egyptian Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, the two sides affirmed their keenness to enhance cooperation and coordination to develop joint Arab action in a way that serves the common interests of the two countries and their keenness to support Arab issues. The visit included the participation in the sixth conference of the Arab Parliament, where Alam Salam stressed the urgent need to approve an advanced legislative structure for artificial intelligence. At the conclusion of the visit, Alam Salam stressed the importance of strengthening the role of parliamentary diplomacy in supporting Bahraini Egyptian cooperation in all development fields and activating memorandums of understanding, joint agreements, projects, initiatives, and bilateral programs that will benefit the two countries and their brotherly peoples. The official visit carried out by the Shura Council delegation headed by the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, to Egypt affirmed that Bahrain is keen to strengthen joint cooperation between the two brotherly countries, in addition to enhancing cooperation between Arab countries in various fields in a way that serves their common goals and interests. More in this report. The participation in the work of the Sixth Conference of the Arab Parliament. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, stressed the fraternal and strategic ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Egypt, which contributed to the sustainability of partnerships and close cooperation. During the visit, the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa on the occasion of his visit to Cairo and his participation as a guest of honor in the conference. During his speech at the conference, which was organized by the Arab Parliament in Egypt, the Shura Council chairman stressed the artificial intelligence systems and softwares are developing rapidly and unprecedentedly. And during his participation in the closed session of the conference, a draft document prepared by the Arab Parliament entitled A Parliamentary Vision for Achieving the Safe Employment of Artificial Intelligence was approved. During the visit, the Shura Council chairman held a session with the Qatari counterpart where they affirmed the depth of the close and rooted relations between Bahrain and Qatar, which are becoming deeper through fraternal ties and cooperation between the two brotherly countries. During joint parliamentary discussions with the Speaker of the Egyptian Representatives Council, the Shura Council chairman affirmed that the historical relations between Bahrain and Egypt are growing through close cooperation, continuous coordination, and a shared vision between the two countries towards Arab issues in a way that translates the aspirations of the leadership of His Majesty the King and the Egyptian President. During his meeting with the President of the Egyptian Senate, as Saleh affirmed that the fraternal and strategic connection between Bahrain and Egypt contributes to the sustainability of partnership and close cooperation. The President of the Egyptian Senate affirmed full support for the Kingdom of Bahrain in hosting the 33rd Arab Summit, praising the effective and positive initiatives and steps taken by Bahrain to enhance the cohesion and harmony of Arab countries. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular session headed by its chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council expressed appreciation for the humanitarian initiative of His Majesty the King of pardoning hundreds of convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne and coinciding with Eid al Fitr. They stressed that this step affirms the wise approach of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty in upholding the values of tolerance and compassion as a basis for comprehensive development. The session also welcomed holding the 33rd Arab League Summit in Bahrain next month. The Council affirmed that this summit comes during a delicate and sensitive time, wishing success to the Arab leaders in enhancing cooperation, independence and continuous coordination. They also wish success in coming up with successful decisions that address issues of importance, especially the Palestinian cause. The session reviewed the General Secretariat's MOUs regarding the fourth session of the Bahrain International Quran Recitation Competition, Global Reader, and thanked His Majesty for patronizing the competition. The Council also reviewed the report of the Mosque Construction Follow-up Committee the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, participated in a dialogue session in Riyadh at the invitation of Saudi Arabia and Norway to study the two state solution and the recognition of Palestine, Palestinians as a state. In the presence of a number of senior officials and the Arab League Secretary General, the discussion focused on the developments of the war in Gaza, its impact on regional security and stability, international security and peace, and regional and international efforts aimed at stopping the war, de-escalating the situation, protecting civilians, and ways to deliver humanitarian aid without obstacles. They also discussed ways to support international efforts aimed at supporting recognition of an independent Palestinian state guaranteeing the rights of the Palestinian people and advancing the just and comprehensive peace process in the Middle East. 
The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in a dialogue session in the special meeting of the World Economic Forum in Riyadh under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia. The minister affirmed uh, that Bahrain is moving forward to achieve the desired visions and aspirations that contribute to the growth and prosperity of the national economy in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 to develop plans and strategies that contribute to achieve comprehensive and sustainable economic growth. He pointed out that the ongoing efforts to diversify the economic base and enhance reliance on the private sector as an effective partner have resulted in many positive outcomes. The minister also participated in a session on the Dutch National Quantum Computing Initiative and pointed out that Bahrain and the countries of the region possess the competitive capabilities necessary for the era of artificial intelligence, pointing out the importance of increasing investment and expansion in the field of digitalization and artificial intelligence. He stressed that the advantages of technical development exceed the risks and must be used for the benefit of the growth of the economy and societies in order to achieve the desired goals. He pointed out the necessity of preparing the appropriate infrastructure for this field and adopting strategic plans and initiatives that aim to promote digital prosperity, create qualitative opportunities and build a promising future. He also stated that Bahrain has paid great attention to increasing investment in promising sectors in addition to accelerating the pace of digital transformation and preparing digital infrastructure and providing it with various facilities and supporting resources by continuing to adopt pioneering regulatory policies and legislative frameworks in a way that contributes to achieving the desired economic growth. The Minister of Youth affirms that Rwanda Tawfiqi attended an agreement signing between the national project Lamia or Lamia and Finnmark Communications. The agreement aims to organize youth programs and boost participation in conferences and events related to the development and growth of young people. On the occasion, Tawfiqi stressed the ministry's keenness to foster cooperation between Lamia and other national organizations to expand youth engagement in various forms, increasing their level of expertise and upgrading their skills and capabilities. Capability. She stressed commitment to build national youth capabilities and invest in their potential, adding that the goal is to empower young people to play a pivotal role in creating the future. The minister also said that the agreement is part of the efforts to achieve the Lamia Association's goals. The agreement was signed by the vice chairperson of Lamia Association, Sheikh Duha or Duha bint Khalid Al Khalifa, and the managing director of Finnmark Communication, Zahra Tahar. The Supreme Council for the Environment announced a fishing ban on Shari, Safi and Andag starting from May 1st until May 31st, 2024, in accordance with Edit 2 of 2024. The Council explained that the first article of the edict stipulates that fishing is prohibited in territorial waters of Bahrain for Shari, Safi and Andag fish. The ban for the year 2024 will be during the month of May only. Fishermen must release these fish caught during the ban back into the sea and ensure their safety. The Council stressed the need to strengthen community cooperation to commit to implementing the decision which contributes to preserving fish wealth. It noted that the process of regulating fishing is a national responsibility. The general directors of the capital municipality, the Muharraq municipality, the northern municipality and the southern municipality conducted a field in, 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 in variation regions to closely review all preparations and plans and ensure complete readiness to deal with rainwater accumulations in record time. Affirming uh, the raising of levels of preparations to deal with weather forecasts that indicate the possibility of re rainfall during the next two days. They noted the presence of rain emergency teams in the field to ensure the readiness of rainwater siphoning tanks and pumps according to the drawn-up plan to deal with rainwater accumulation. The Meteorological Department of the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications warned of thunderstorms accompanied by strong gusts. It was also reported that the weather in the Kingdom of Bahrain will be partly cloudy with a chance of scattered rain that may sometimes be thundery during the night and winds will be in northly to northeastly. Variably in directions from 7 to 12 knots with gusts that may reach 30 knots during the evening.
The President of Iraq, Abdul Latif Rashid, received the credentials of Khaled Ahmed Al Mansour as Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Iraq. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and their wishes for good health and happiness to the President and further progress and prosperity to Iraq and its people. The President asked the Ambassador to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and expressed Iraq's aspirations to strengthen fraternal relations with Bahrain in various fields. He wished the Ambassador success in his new work duties.